hope your day is going awesome. Here's how the video is laid out. I'll first go through the main quotes and ideas, and then have detailed discussions about each one of them. First, our disclaimer. I'm not a guru, expert, or master. I'm a normal guy who has applied stoicism to his life. My life is generally much better compared to three years ago when I started. I'm not perfect, and I'm only here to share what I have learned. Well, if you're like most people, I know you've thought about death, and then you fear it. In this video, Seneca is showing us how funny it is that we fear death. Yeah, he thinks it's actually funny. Well, he shows us why we should not fear death, but also that we should, you know, make fun of death and scorn it, and never worry about things that are going to happen. Reaching this mental state of having no worries is ideal, but these ideas that I'm going to show you are going to bring us closer to that, so let's dig in. Quote 1. Keep improving yourself so that you may have longer enjoyment of an improved mind. One that is at peace with itself. You will derive enjoyment during the time when you are improving your mind and setting it at peace with itself. But quite different is the pleasure which comes from deep reflection when one's mind is so cleansed from every stain that it shines. Quote 2. For it is not boyhood that stays with us, but something worse. Boyishness. And this condition is more serious because we possess the authority of old age together with the foolishness of boyhood. Boys fear trifles, children fear shudders, we fear both. 3. All you need to do is make your mind better. You will then understand that some things are less to be dreaded, precisely because they inspire us with great fear. No evil is great, which is the last evil of all. If death arrives, it would be a thing to dread if it could remain with you. But death must either not come at all, or else must come and pass away. 4. No man can have a peaceful life who thinks too much about lengthening it or believes that living through many generations is a great blessing. 5. Most men ebb and flow in wretchedness between the fear of death and the hardships of life. They are unwilling to live, and yet they do not know how to die. For this reason, make life agreeable to yourself by banishing all worry about it. Alright, let's go through the explanations. So, quote number one, keep improving yourself so that you may have a longer enjoyment of an improved mind, one that is at peace with itself. You will derive enjoyment during the time when you are improving your mind and setting it at peace with itself. But quite different is the pleasure which comes from deep reflection, when one's mind is so cleansed from every stain that it shines. Uh, we all have reasons as to why we want to become better. Now, our reasons may be valid or not, but the best line is that we have not improved our state. Well, I will touch on these two topics. Well, let's say the first example is like, people may be like, Oh, Valentine, I have child trauma. I hate my parents for what they did. And my life is hell, and I will never be fine. Well, I would respond to them. I think a stoic sage would ask you, Who is enduring the suffering of the trauma? Is it you, or is it your parents? Even if your parents came begging for forgiveness, would the situation be lifted from you? The answer is no. So whether they reconcile with you or not, the end thing is that you must put in the work to alleviate yourself from the trauma. Well, you must ask yourself, what do you enjoy the most? Pity for your situation or enjoying a healthy mind? These are questions I asked myself some time back. And I know that the faster you work on yourself, then you'll have a longer time to live with a better mind. Well, let's say situation number two, you're lonely and you don't have friends. Well, I must first think that why is it even the most evil man in the world like Putin do have friends and of course they may not be real friends but then if such an evil man has friends then maybe the bigger reason why you might not have friends is because maybe you have not put yourself out there right uh, and then instead of people maybe instead of waiting for people to come and talk to you why don't you go talk to them so situations like this the faster you work on yourself then the longer time you're gonna have to live with better friends so we must strive to become better every day so that we have a longer time to enjoy this good state. If you keep getting better every day, this is going to become your normal state of mind. It is a beautiful feeling, but it doesn't come for free, and we must put in the work. Well, quote number two talks about, you know, when we grow up, the boyishness stays with us. We're adults in terms of body, but our minds are still childish. So we know that when we move from childhood to adulthood, our bodies grow physically right and our minds actually also grow but you have to think of us like think of athletes you know their bodies grow up yes they become older from babies to teenagers and then to you know youth but their bodies only become exceptional after they've worked on it same thing for your mind when you grow up it actually just develops the potential to become better but it's not better in itself we have to make it better 
otherwise we will remain with all our faults that we had in childhood and now we have an older body with the same mind as a child and then we'll be suffering with the same problems for all our life. Quote number three talks about that no evil is greater to the last evil of all and if death arrives it would be a thing to dread if it could remain with us but death might either not come at all or else if it comes it will go away and we won't feel it. Of course people are going to say it is difficult to bring the mind to a point where it can scorn life. Yeah, but well Seneca, well, Seneca challenges us and says it's not difficult to scorn life. Don't we see the crazy reasons that make men to hate their lives? One person hangs himself before the door of his ex-girlfriend who dumped him. Another jumps off a building because he cannot bear a bad-tempered boss. A third to be saved from arrest after running away drives a sword into his chest. Now we have to ask ourselves, don't you think that staying strong and having a great character will produce successful res results more than excessive fear? Because if excessive fear can cause us to do crazy things, then what could bravery do? Great fear causes us to stay in jobs that we hate, to stay in toxic relationships, sadly to kill ourselves sometimes, to endure tyranny, to stay lonely, to endure a lot of pain and suffering. So you can argue that we have the capacity to endure a lot of pain and suffering because that is what we are currently doing. So what could the bounds of courage be? So what if instead of suffering because of these bad things like fear, we suffer to be great? If death is evil, then it will be the last evil that we shall endure and we shall not feel it. Stoics say that we should fear death if we can feel it, but we shall not be able to feel it. So that means that death shall never come. And if if it comes, then it will go away immediately as soon as it comes, so we should not be scared. This is easier said than done, but we cannot deny that this is a liberating thought. We shall never have to endure our own death. Well, I'll put quote 4 and 5 together. No man can have a peaceful life who thinks too much about lengthening it or believes that living long is a great blessing. And most men ebb and flow in wretchedness between the fear of death and the hardships of life. They are unwilling to live and yet they don't know how to die for this life. Let's make life agreeable by banishing all worry about it. This one always gets me. Most people are always complaining about their lives. But at the same time, they are scared of dying. So they spend most of their time either complaining about life or worrying about their death. Well, if you have seen most of your friends or people around the world, you will realize that when things are going well in their life, then they are scared of losing those things. They spend more time trying to protect themselves from losing the things than actually enjoying those things. On the other hand, when bad things happen to them and things are not going well as they want them to be, then they're always complaining about why they don't have what they want to have. Think of your friend who is always complaining about not having a boyfriend, but when they get a boyfriend, they spend all the time being jealous and defensive. Either way, with or without a boyfriend, they don't have a good time in their lives. For this reason, we should make our life better by banishing all worry. Otherwise, we will always be worried about life. When it is great, worried that the good times will end. When it is bad, worried and complaining about our situations. Well, that's it my friends. I hope you enjoyed these lessons of Stoicism on how to make our lives better. Thank you for your time and have a good day. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. And also check out my other videos. Have a good day.